the Toronto real estate market in 2020? Will it go up or down? Everyone wants to know. People keep asking me, Yossi, what's going to happen in 2020? Is it going up or down? Are we at peak or not? Well, let's, let's look at that. Hello, everyone. My name is Yossi Kaplan, and I'm a Toronto real estate agent and mortgage broker with Search Realty Corp and Search Mortgage. And today we're going to talk about what do you think is going to happen to the Toronto real estate market in 2020? So let's dive right into it. Uh, Yossi Kaplan here, twitter.com slash Yossi Kaplan. Please follow me here to get all the updates from all the channels. They all uh, come here by way of uh, manual updating or bot. Most of these are automatic. Uh, the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Yossi Kaplan. Thank you everyone very, very much for liking, subscribing, commenting. I really appreciate it. Uh, when you post comments and really good comments from people coming in, um, I, do, I do my best to uh, respond directly and as accurately as I can. So, you know, if you email me questions, okay, I'll give you a line or two, but if you, it's in a video, everyone can share the information. So I put more effort there. So if you want to ask me a question, ask me in the video direct. And today the question is, what's going to happen with the Toronto real estate market? You know how the market's going up and up and up like crazy. We reviewed it. We reviewed it. Uh, 2020 peak condo was a big video here. You know, it's like, are we, are we hitting the price? Are we hitting the, the max? And here, there's a thing called the house price index.ca. Uh, which is the Terranet and National Bank of Canada. They put this together. And it's a, that's a new attempt to put a, a, a number, an index, on, on, the, uh, on the house price index of, uh, of Toronto uh, in Canada. So you can come to this site here and you can compare all kinds of stuff. So, for example, here, uh, let's compare the last three years. Let's see if I can do it. And this is all live, by the way. I wanna, uh, I'm looking at Hamilton, Kitchen Waterloo is interesting, uh, St. Catharines is interesting. Um, and Brantford. Okay, those are kind of the areas I focus on, right? So here we go. And what do we see here? We see that Toronto um, is up there at the top. Okay, that's Toronto. And Hamilton's below. And then all the other lines are pretty much here that the uh, uh, Kitchener, St. Catharines, Brantford, they're all, they're all together. They're more or less the same. And you can see how all these lines um, are moving together in sequence, up and down, up and down. That means that if Toronto goes up, everyone goes up. If Toronto goes down, everyone goes down. Or you can look at it the other way. But of course, Toronto is the leader. So, you know, the, mar the market moves in, in synchronicity. Um, there's a sync between the market. Uh, so the question is the, the cost to enter. So the cost to enter in Toronto is very, very high because prices in Toronto are so high. You know, we reviewed it and we looked at would you buy a condo of $1,400 foot. Uh, where was that one? Here. $1,400. That's a lot of views. Uh, because that's really the thing. And when you go to the condo calculator, and I gave you the condo calculator, wherever it is, condo calculator, and when you go to the condo calculator, I'm just going to open a uh, thing here, condocalculator.ca, and it's going to bring you the condo calculator. And what this thing does, this is a tool you can download, it's a spreadsheet that you download. And when you download, put your name, your email, I'm not a robot, it's going to send you back a link, you download the uh, spreadsheet, and you can calculate if your condo breaks even or not. And how much would you need for that condo to break even? So it'll, it'll do, you know, it'll do, it'll do the search for you. Basically, estimate uh, these things for you, which is really, really important. You should do this. And thank you very much. There's a lot of people downloaded this thing. Uh, because before you get into any adventure, or even if you own a place, or if you want to, like, know what the condo calculator will say regarding uh, your break-even cost of your own condo or another condo, imaginary condo, any property, um, you can play with it there. And for privacy matters, just download the spreadsheet. Uh, cannot do it online at down onto your computer, do it in your Excel, in your Apple numbers, in your Google Sheets, you know, whatever. Um, I think probably Microsoft the Outlook does that too. They give you the break even point, the maintenance fees, the music, but they give you all the things, then they'll tell you how many dollars per foot you need in order to break even. And then you give it how many bedrooms you got and they'll tell you how many bedrooms um, <clears throat> was, the, was the cost per bedroom. So you can see if it's a rental situation or two people sharing a unit, what would it look like, okay? Now we all know that um, the, the prices uh, of condos have gone up pretty much, uh, much, much up. Let's look at the TREB uh, report here. Uh, this page here, by the way, that's uh, Toronto Real Estate Board. You go to trebhome.com. They're going to Market Watch, okay, Market Watch. It's on the Market Stats, Market Watch. Uh, and this is October. Now, November is not going to come until uh, 10 days or so. So, you know, we're at the end of November, but there's still another 10 days until we get the stats. But I'm just going to give it to you right now because I, th I think we get it. We really get it. So if you look at the, at the historic statistics, you know, we know that 2017 was just a crazy, crazy year. 15, 16, 17 were crazy, crazy years. 
and that you can see that whether you go to the trim home or you go to those uh, house statistics uh, so that's the Toronto page here and right now in October it shows you that the index hasn't got much up it went by about four percent year to date year over year so, you know crunching a four percent now which is a very good comfortable uh, place to be you know three to eight it's what I like to see interest rates are so low of course when interest rates are low they're pushing the price up and all the new construction is coming up at thirteen fourteen hundred uh, dollars a foot even more and of course at this rate you know the average rental rate of four dollar a foot just doesn't cover you need five buck a foot to cover but the problem is that when you have tenants um, they cannot pay five buck a foot because their salaries go up slower than the prices so we're getting into a situation here which we never had before in, in Toronto I'm not sure other parts of Canada um, I think they're probably more reasonable maybe with Vancouver is more or less like Toronto um, but what happens here is that there's a lot of pressure on the renters to pay more um, and if they can the owner has a choice whether to leave the unit uh, just leave it leave it there wait for the right tenant they can pay for the unit or start lowering the price okay now assuming that there's enough units on the market available at rent then price of rents will come down now, it doesn't mean that the price of the unit will come down because you know no landlord even if a landlord has to put 100 200 bucks out of pocket um, to cover um, the rent you know assuming the rent doesn't cover uh, the expenses uh, you're not gonna sell the unit for 100 200 bucks a month you're just gonna add that money or maybe make a lump sum towards your deposit and I showed you how to do it in the condo calculator you can totally do it um, and he'll show you how much money uh, you need to do it in order to come to the break even point I review it and if you want another review about this just put post a comment below I'll make a video showing you how, how to find the break even uh, easily uh, but what you can see here and this is uh, condos.ca which by the way big grain of salt when you use this site because it, it goes up and down and the numbers change rapidly because the sample size they use is too small so condos.ca I know you have amazing developers I know it's an amazing team uh, they're absolutely fantastic for introducing this to Toronto thank you for all that but get those stats under control as a matter of fact when you go to condos.ca now uh, the stats are down I think they're down because we saw how uh, this was chugging along at 740, 750 a foot, and then it went to 695 a foot. Then I logged in the other day, it was like 850 a foot, but the number of units used were like five units. So they, they got to get this under control. Uh, I don't think it's a really big thing to do. Nonetheless, you got to do it. Um, but I'm going to go over a lot of things here, and I'll, sh I'll show you how to do your own research. And remember, condos that say could be faulty, uh, but these are more like a government things that are really big and large. and. Um, it gives you more of a big overview, okay? So the house price index here, and you know, at the end of the day, I'm a real estate agent. I help people buy, sell condos, investments, Toronto, Brantford, Kitchener, Waterloo. Uh, we go all the way to Guelph, Hamilton, Niagara Falls, St. Catharines, okay? That's kind of our territory. Um, I, 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 I do deals in Oshawa through other brokers that um, are helping out. Uh, but you know there's so much we can just travel around so pr pretty much from Toronto from King and Bathurst west uh, to the American border that, uh, that's where we go uh, which is great I love that area so you can see here on the map so this is what it, um, this is considered as Toronto obviously it's, it's a huge area here and it's 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 much larger than the Toronto proper which is down here and for me Toronto proper is really just between the Don and the Humber from the water to, to the 401 that's it uh, you know, when I came to Toronto, it was to Bloor, and then it was St. Clair, then it was Eglinton, now it's a 4 one But what you can see here, the prices are chugging along. I'm going to show you some uh, crazy stats here. Uh, so the first one, and I'm going to show you these crazy stats we're going to pull all together. And then, and then after this, I'll show you how to find deals, okay? So bear with me for the next three, five minutes. I'm going, to sh I'm going to review these stats, and I'm going to go right away and explain how to find deals in this crazy market okay and I'll explain to you if it's going up or down we will have an answer okay but it's gonna take me a little bit to just show you how I think and share with you my thinking uh, right or wrong I'm just gonna share with you um, so watch this so the value of USD over time you know the most traded currency in the history of the world maybe in the Roman Empire salt was bigger I don't know but it is for now and you can see the purchase power of, of the US dollar is dropping like crazy so what was a hundred years ago one dollar is now worth two cents okay what was one dollar 
it's just dropping like a rock you can see here so it had a bit of an uptick here especially after the big crash of the 20s the late 20s 29 then it just free fall just absolute free fall you know and once they they disconnected the, the dollar from the gold it dropped more and after the 80s with all the inflation the Reaganomics it dropped more and now it's just basically asymptotic to zero it's almost hitting zero asymptotic it's just getting so close but never touching it uh, and that's what's happening so the value of this currency is dropping and dropping and dropping why is it dropping and when the, the USD drops everyone drops the whole world drops okay we're all connected it's not like Toronto is gonna drop and nothing else will happen over it you know if, if there was a big big drop then the whole world will be it's gonna be global it's gonna be everywhere it's not gonna be uh, and, and people still think oh Toronto can drop so, no. if Toronto drops everything drops everything the whole world drops because Toronto does not set the economic trend Toronto follows it okay so the reason the dollar drops is because we print more money it's inflation if I could buy the popsicle for one dollar today and tomorrow the, they pr they double the amount of money in circulation now I gotta pay two dollars to get the same value for the one popsicle so the more money we print um, the, the value goes down and obviously the psychological things with disconnecting from gold it drops inflation in the 80s is dropped all that stuff now you know the whole thing with the new energy and Tesla Cybertruck and all these things and why did they get to a thousand uh, uh, people like give them a hundred bucks each for the pre-order it's, it's it's a show of confidence it's really showing you that the world is moving that we all together as a society as a global society now there's a map you can see all the cyber trucks ordered in the world you know and I don't have parking for that giant thing but if I had I'd probably spend a hundred bucks on it um, and plug it to the wall and it's gonna be great but that, that's that's the thing and and you know the reverse of and, and you know when when we're moving from an oil-based economy to an electric-based economy, things will, I believe, things will come up. But it's going to take a little bit. It's going to take until you realize that, why am I driving his gasoline truck or car, or why would I buy one when I can buy a Tesla for less? Uh, the only reason you're going to do this is, one, because, because you're afraid of it. Second is the range. And three is you don't have to, put up to charge it. Well, all these are going to change, you know. If everyone's around you is doing it, so you go, okay, well, it's probably good for me. In the range, you know, that thing goes 200, 300, 500 miles. That's fine. That's like 800 clicks. So you can go from here to wherever, Quebec City, on one charge, no problem. And of course, where would I charge it? There'll be a lot more charge stations. And all the condos uh, will have to get the electrician and start doing, uh, give solutions for plugins. And of course, to meter them. Uh, so, you know, if unit number uh, 1023 is plug in, it's charged to that unit and not to the whole building. It's pretty simple, really. The electricians will come, connect them, pull a meter on it, you're done. There's going to be lots of solutions. So the money is going down. As the money is going down, inflation is coming up, and it's pushing prices up. There's no other choice but to push prices up, okay? So if, if you can't see, the thing is about here, you can't see, but you can just put uh, Toronto downtown. Let me see. So now I'm pulling the entire, what, what it's called, Toronto area, which which... Here it goes to, I think to four, uh, north of 401 even. Okay, Markham's very expensive. So here we go. Um, Condos that here does have some, and it's based on 17,000 sales, 745, and it did go up by 6.6%, and the other one said about 4%. So you know, say 5% or 5.5%, that's still very healthy and quite fast. That means that the market doubles every eight or nine years or something like that. Okay, I think the market doubles. Um, if, the, if the rate is about 7 or 8%, it takes about 5 or 6 years to double. So the, the smaller the increment, the longer it takes to double. But think about it, the same house, the same condo, exact same, can double in value in 5 or 10 years. That is unreal. And that's what this whole thing is about, okay? So now the, the whole condo is not only it's, it's moving the economy, we're dependent on it. So what do we do? It's very simple. We bring more people to buy them. So those are called immigrants like myself. Now I came as a poor student. I had nothing. I just came to study and then I thought maybe I can stay. And it was an opportunity for me to stay. And I did the paperwork and it took forever. And of course they lost my file and all. <laughs> they didn't lose your file. They just whatever. Um, but eventually I got my papers. It's all good. But you can see Canada's uh, visible minority population, immigration, it's coming up and up and up and up. And we are bringing a lot of people into Canada. And you can see 
So we're bringing something like 250. That's 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 in 2012. Now it's um, over 300,000. So here it goes to 2017, 271, 216, 323, 240, 267. So you know we're looking at about 300,000 immigrants coming into Canada. Um, these days, maybe more, and that does not include refugees and all those. Now, there's a difference. Canada sees uh, 300,000 largest influx, okay? So, how many beds you need for 300,000 new immigrants? You know, even if they come in families and stuff, there's still like 200,000 uh, homes or 150,000 homes. It's, like, it's a huge, huge amount. Um, the Toronto industry can only churn about 10 to 20,000 condos a year. And I'm talking here about 15 to 20 times more than that. So what's going to happen to prices if there's scarcity? The price will have to be pushed up. It's always being pushed up because there's so many people coming in. Okay, what else? Uh, what kind of tabs have got? Immigration to Canada. So there you go. We'll skip. Uh, I don't know if they got the. Oh, they, they got some numbers here. No graph. So, uh, 2017, India sent uh, 51,600 people. Philippines sent 40,000. China sent 30,000. Uh, friends, when you're in public, put your phones on vibrate, okay? <laughs> it's just how it is. It's busy. Uh, Syria, those are probably mostly refugees, but you know, the top three are probably non refugee. My guess is that India sends a lot of computer engineers and there's a lot of money there. And China, of course, there's lots of money coming in. And Philippines could be uh, more support workers. Okay, Syria's refugees. The United States, I'm sure they're coming with money. And a lot of these places send people with a lot of money. Um, a lot of money. So here they got 286,000 others. So this. Okay, so 300,000 people come in every year to Canada, and they'll, be, they'll grow and grow and grow. And these people, you know, there's only two ways they can come into Canada. One is they come with money, uh, money to spend, and then they use that money to buy homes and to buy food and shelter and consume. So it's good for our economy. And the other thing is they come to work or they come as refugees. Okay, a little loud there, but I, I hope it doesn't bother you. Okay, so now we got to think to ourselves, um, how, does that all, how does that all work together? Uh, the Canadian dollar fluctuates, but you know, more or less, I'd, I'd rather look at the global picture. This, this one, this one here, the global picture. So uh, the lady next to me sounds like she's speaking Farsi, Persian, so lots of immigrants from all over the world, okay? And you know, you look at the people, what they wear, look at where they sit, look what they order. I mean, that, that's a, you know, a $15 order for breakfast. A refugee does not spend $15 on, on nice pastries and a coffee. Now that's, you can live on that for three days. So, so it, it just tells you, when you hear foreign language, just like myself, and you look at what they wear, and you look at what they eat, just look at me, and you can understand um, which status brought them into the country. So if they come with money to the country, they are consuming, and that is good for the Canadian economy, but of course it's not good for locals. So uh, myself, for example, after being in Canada for so many years, you know, I don't bring money from outside. That, that's done long, long ago. I just live here, and I'm a Canadian like everyone else. But that means that now I'm also dependent on new immigration. So even the old immigrants, new, new immigration, it just has to, it just has to keep, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Okay? So that is a reason, you know, we need more beds and we have more people consuming and they're coming from other countries and they come with money and they come with US dollars so that because the, the global currency is still US dollar you know it's not you and it's not ruble it's not Bitcoin it's USD don't have any mistakes about it and it's gonna take a long time to that changes so that means and in the meantime I'm gonna clear filters here and do some other things here King West just uh, no downtown Okay, so now I got the downtown here, and the downtown uh, also five five and a half percent, nine eighty three a foot, you know. And, and you can add areas here if they have the data. Yes, they do. Oh, but that's only the data. So okay, so if you want to do the downtown, just hit the downtown, and then you can see the stats here. And the average dollar per foot is nine eighty three. That's very very stable. And you can see how the graph went up, and now it's stabilizing. So. <clears throat> You know, if, if it's going to stabilize for now at around 1000 bucks a foot, that's good because now we can start planning as investors what to do, what kind of rents we need, and you can start to see the equilibrium reestablishes itself, okay? When, when the graph goes up too fast, and that's, that's the answer to the question, you know, is the price too high? Well, it's always going to be peaking as long as we continue in this 
state of environment, okay? Uh, if I put my economist hat on, and you know, you don't need a degree to be an economist, there's no school that will give you the, the, the certificate, and now you're an economist. <laughs> Anyone's economist, I am definitely one. Um, and when you see that price going up so fast and then it stabilizes, that's to me, that's a good sign because now we're letting price catch up. Okay, it's, it's coming in. Uh, remember, it came in too fast. It came in too fast, 15, 16, 17. So 18 kind of stabilizes, but I think we're going to see 19 already passing 18 and very, very potentially and very likely will also pass 2017. That means that 2019 is about to become the most expensive um, year on, on the Toronto Real Estate Index. Okay, 2019 is going to be the most expensive year on the Toronto Real Estate Index. Uh, what is it going to tell you? It's going to tell you it, it, it has to push up because there's huge, huge economic forces, which is immigration to Canada with lots of money. You know, each of these immigrants is probably worth the Canadian economy one to twenty million dollars over their lifetime because they got to buy the house and they got to spend and they got to consume and they got to pay bills and they they take the taxi and they take the Uber and they drive the car and they buy the car and they get insured. Ta -ta 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 -ta. It's endless. So three hundred thousand every year, you know, plus everyone else that comes here and not documented that's easy a million people every three years a million people into Canada every three years and we only we only have 35 million in this country so that's almost three percent adding to our population every year three percent with big um, with big pockets big pockets okay so that's huge um, so would the prices keep going up I think they will now it may not be as fast but it will keep coming up, and in order to just keep the hunger, we just gotta bring more money in, and the easiest to bring more money in, to bring more bodies in, especially from where they can pay for it. Okay, so when you look here, basically these are the countries that we are giving quotas to and bringing people in, and trust the Canadian government, the federal government, to do what's best for us. I really hope they do. I don't know, I never go there. Um, but bring people in, from countries that you know bring people in that have the money but then they invest at the same time that makes it also more expensive for us uh, born here or old immigrants like myself because prices are being pushed up uh, you know if we weren't bringing anyone in, into into town or into the country um, then what would have happened you know we just start trading with ourselves and price could be more stable um, so in order to accelerate economic growth bring more people and the best thing to do it is to bring more people that can consume, that have the money. But that, again, pushes the prices up. So that's the equilibrium. That's the environment we work in. And that's why I think prices will keep coming up. Okay? So download the common calculator and find out what you need what you need in order to break even or how much deposit you need in order to bring to that uh, break-even point. I hope that's clear. Now, how would you act when... How would you act and would the market go up and down? So, first of all, I think the market will go up on the resale um, and the new construction and the best areas, the hot areas will keep creeping up and, and, the, and what's going to happen is going to be a lot of pushback from the areas which are very, very expensive push out into the areas which are less expensive, which are those which are Hamilton, Brantford, Niagara, I get a call about Niagara every day, uh, Kitchener, Waterloo, Guelph, you know, and the other side of course which is the Oshawa. Uh, Clarington, Bowmanville, all the way to Peterborough, all the way to Ottawa. Okay, even Montreal is coming up. Why? Because if you wanna, if you wanna have a life which is uh, easier in the pocket, don't have to hustle so much. You know, Toronto is a big city. It's not for everyone to live in a big city. It's, it's a lot of pavement, a lot of people, a lot of stress. Very fast. Um, public transport is, is is a mess. You know, you can't even get on it. <laughs> Um, so may, maybe you want a more reasonable uh, living, more easier living. So you're going to go to Montreal or Ottawa or Hamilton, you know, any of these places where we can provide you the quality of living um, without the cost, without the stress, and without the busyness, and without that, that so many people uh, together. So will these condos or the $1,400 condo will sell out? Yes, they will. Uh, will people buy them? Yes, they will. Will people live in them? Yes, they will. Will it break even? They will, after a certain point, they will break even because they have to, because everything will be pushed up. Salaries pushed up slower than the inflation, but that's how it is. If you, if, if you, want, if you want to make more money faster, 
um, what you gotta do um, is you gotta hustle, you gotta entrepreneur, you gotta get another job, you gotta get a raise, you gotta, that's on. So <clears throat> go to torontocondos.ca, uh, uh, go to uh, torontocondosforsale.com, click on the project, so the new construction, I changed that button to see, uh, there's, I called support and they said there's various functions, so I changed it to see what's gonna come up. And uh, they just added Sky Tower. This, uh, this is a service that's been added for me here. Um, and that is a crazy, crazy development. Uh, it just came out, the Sky Tower. That's yet one young. That's with the uh, old uh, Toronto Star Building. Toronto Star Building itself is getting uh, um, uh, floors added. And there's three or four projects here. I think this goes to 60 to 90 stories. It's huge. It's absolutely huge. Now, should you buy here? That's the thing. You know, you gotta look at what is this gonna do. This is this is a huge community. Pinnacle is building massive, massive things. Okay, Pinnacle is giant, and they've built uh, in the area there. They built quite a bit. So register if you want more information. You wanna and, and you wanna be um, you wanna be notified when information comes in. Just come here when the sale is available. But the point is, you can find good deals. And I told you in the last couple of videos how to invest like the pros. So how to invest like the pro, professional real estate investing, how to invest like the rich, you know, these are all basically telling you what to do. What you gotta do is you gotta look for value. Value is the key here. You know, maybe you have $1,400 foot available, that's your budget. So, you know, a and condos, huge value. That's why it's the first for still the same in Nordic, also fantastic value. There's still a few units left, but almost sold out, uh, okay? New calculator, understand what size you wanna buy, how many bedrooms you wanna buy, but you can invest and you know there will be people that invest every single day somebody is buying and selling a condo here and every single day someone is buying new property so go to uh, torontocondos.sale uh, torontocondosforsale.com uh, hit the projects in toronto and start browsing and see what's available okay get the information from me and the best thing of course is to give me a call or to meet me in person that's what i do I'm a selling agent, I sell pre-construction, I sell resale, and I do a lot of listing for people that want to sell their condos, want to sell their investments, that's what we do, okay? So if you want information about any of these condos or other, just hit the form. Uh, that's the easiest way because then I have your email and phone and I can call you back and give you the information. Uh, nonetheless, there's so many opportunities and I'll show you how to find assignments and price reductions here too. Um, because that is a great, great trick for investing, and that's what's important for me to, that you understand is there's always an opportunity for investing, okay? There's always an opportunity. Look at Warren Buffett. I love to go back to Warren Buffett, because Warren Buffett, when everyone else is going, oh my God, da, 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 Warren Buffett goes and invests. When everyone's like buying like crazy, Warren Buffett just sits there quiet. I already bought it for cheap. I'm going to sell it to you now. That's what he does, and that's what you want to do, okay? So, you know, the well is... Absolutely fantastic. I think it's it's probably like the top, 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 uh, you know, master plan community. You can buy in Galleria and uh, Crosstown. These are the three main ones right now. Um, and there's a Brantford master plan community we'll introduce the next couple of days. The moment I have uh, some time to put all the information together for you in the way I like to present it. Uh, when you come here, this will give you at the bottom here. This is uh, UrbanRealtyToronto.com, by the way and you come down here and all these links are already pre-programmed so what's available and these are actual, actual um, properties for sale uh, they aggregate MLS and Andy of the system so just hit that button and here you get and you can see what's happening so oh you like uh, you like uh, Bohemian Embassy here okay that's great there's you need Bohemian just take a look at it and there you go so what is this this is um, what do we got here 598 unit 1311 there's an open house. There's a really nice uh, one bedroom, one bath. So these are these are actually really nice. I think this is a west facing. Oh, seven. Actually, it could be east. Let's look at the pictures. Uh, but really nice. This is uh, Queen West. It's one of my favorite buildings on Queen West in the city. Those are really nice units. They are they're very much like the model suite. And actually, that's a really nice price for this unit. Um, you got you got this. Uh, bedroom that is uh, that is separated by glass doors that's why it could be called a bedroom because it needs a window and a little den stuck here and it's an open concept <clears throat> beautiful okay very very nice this is a really really nice unit here and you can see here's the bedroom closed and the kitchen is the back and you know Yossi loves oh I almost canceled the recording here but you know Yossi loves uh, uh, the kitchen at the back 
<clears throat> very, very good. That's a good unit, my friends. And these are some of the upgrades, the original upgrades that uh, Bohemian enjoyed. Of course, you can uh, redo it. If you need help with uh, upgrading, renovation, let me know. But uh, this is a nice unit. So this is way less than a thousand a foot. Now, sometimes what happens, the seller uh, will put the units at, at a certain price, looking to elicit uh, offers. So they'll say, you know, send all your offers on this date and this time, and then they try to bring the price up. I was last week involved in one of those where the unit sold for at 80 or 100,000 more than was asked, but you know, they put the price real low in order to bring the price up. There are 13 offers, we're one of them. Uh, my buyers maxed out in a certain price. We made it about halfway out, and then we got maxed out. And those things happen, okay? Those things do happen. Um, but that's a really nice unit. Okay, so that is a nice unit. Take a look at it. If you want to book a showing, just go to book a showing uh, right here. It'll just pop a date, say request, put your name, I'll get it, I'll give you a call, we'll go see it. Okay, I think I'm gonna go see a few units in this area tomorrow with uh, one of my clients. So one thing to do is look at the uh, resales because there's a lot of opportunities about resales and you'll find them through here. The other thing is special searches. So there's a listing alert. Let's say you're interested in a certain area uh, or location, you click, uh, I did a quick, but, and this is tools for investors, okay? And even if you're not buying today, you know how to do it and follow the market. So go to urbanrealtytoronto.com, Go to the special searchers, listings, listing, listing alerts. Uh, put your location here. It'll pop the map, and then it'll send you up and start sending you listing alerts so you know what's coming up in the area. Maybe the one you wanted didn't come, but two more somebody will list it. So that's a good way to know. And then you can look at assignments, townhomes, penthouses. It just runs searches for you already pre-programmed. It's on all my sites. Uh, so these are all assignments. Okay. Uh, so these are all assignments that you can look at if you want to see like what's happening in the Kingly building uh, with the 501 Adelaide or 620 King. Okay, so that's a great building because Shopify is in here. So here you can get a unit. So that's just over a, a thousand a foot, but still not bad. Um, doesn't say exactly how many square feet. It says oh, between eight and nine, eight nine hundred. So you know it's between eleven hundred to a thousand a foot. Uh, so that's totally cool. Uh, the other thing you can do. Um, I don't have it in the, in uh, links yet, but if you go to yossi.searchfield.co, there's a whole bunch of links here. Uh, price reduction, right there, price reduction. So that's really, really important, price reduction, click on that, and boom. Um, what was reduced, you have to put Toronto here, or whatever you want. And the system will spew out all the price reductions you have. And why is price reduction important? Because investors, you know, you, they want to find price, price reduction. So this thing was reduced. And, you'll, and this side will actually tell you the reduction amount right here. So they reduced by $20,000. Now, it's not a lot, $20,000, but it shows you that the seller is starting to think of eliciting uh, buyers. Okay. So if they reduce by once, they may be reduced again. So that'll be a good uh, target. Okay. And you just keep going through the assignments with the price reductions, even new listings. So you'll see, does that make sense to you that this unit is listed at that price? What would it sell it? And I can look. Uh, I lost the price reduction link. So I, I'm, I'm almost done here for today. Um, but I hope I gave you some value here. So the, it, will the market go up and down? And that's really the main point here. If you made it to the, this point of video, put 1% in the comments. I'll send you another link, a cool link. I'll program one for you. So I think what you're going to see is on the resale, it's just going to keep creeping up, okay, 3, 4, 5, 8%, depending on the building, depending on the area, depending where you are in the city, but you're going to see a slow creep up. With the, the properties that provide you with value will go up the most, and properties that provide you less value will go up the least. What's value? I repeated that in the videos, but value is what investors look like, which is longevity, the 3L video, longevity. Okay, so the tenant comes in, they just stay forever. Like my tenants, they just don't move. So I may not charge them the top, but they just don't move. I don't have to worry about it. I just get paid the first of the month. That's what you want. It's very stable, long term. Uh, value means long term. You know, you don't have to stress out. It's just, it's just churning along. So you, then you can like focus on another property, buy another, do another thing, go on vacation, whatever you want. Okay, value means that the floor plan is good, that the building is good, that you get the best you can for your money. Um, even if you're buying cheap, still get the best you can. If you're buying expensive, get your best you can. But, you know, don't be unrealistic. 
Don't think you can buy the million dollar condo for, for half a million. You know, oh, the price is going to drop by 20%. It's not going to drop by 20%. If it will, there'll be a global catastrophe. It's not going to be, there's no more local events. It just does not exist anymore. You know, 2020 is, is in 33 days, 34 days. So there are no more, you know, if, if it happens, it happens all over the world. If something bad happens over there, you know, you feel it over there. We're all connected. Um, and then, Look in the assignments and the price reduction, yossi.searchrealty.co, price reduction, enter your city and run that search, okay? If he asks you to register, then do, and then you'll be on the system. I wonder if it's got, I haven't tried Hamilton. Hamil Hamilton. Hamilton, Ontario. Let's, let's see what that gives me. I'm, I'm just curious. <laughs> Okay, so I get some houses, uh, mostly houses. You know, Hamilton does not have a lot of condos. That's why these areas of, of condos uh, west of Toronto could be very, very good because some people are not going to want to spend $700,000 on a house and the maintenance, even if it's five forty nine, a cute little home. But it just, you know, they don't want the maintenance and to take care of it. And who knows? It's good, and it's large. So this was reduced by thirty grand, So, you know, three, uh, 4% or so. That's okay. So maybe 30 more. That's still okay. And the thing is, maybe it was just overpriced. Uh, maybe it just was overpriced. Maybe, you know, the seller was optimistic, which is great. Uh, but maybe people don't want to buy like an old school house like that. Although, you know, like some people are going to really love it, like, like a country style kitchen. But some people not. So it's really, there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, uh, of um, preference, personal preference here. But you know, at five, uh, 549 for a cute little house in Hamilton, is really nice. I mean, that's what you can get here for one bedroom in my area. So these are these are these are kind of the things you gotta you gotta think about. Um, will will new construction come down? No, it's not gonna come down because the developer cannot bring it down because they already calculated to launch these properties at a certain price. They're not gonna get the finance unless they sell it at the price they have to sell it at. Okay, so they may cancel the project, but they're not gonna reduce it. They're gonna give you like a ten or twenty thousand uh, discount. It may not be public. You call me and say, hey, do you think we can get a discount on a certain project and we can check with the developer? I know many, many developers. Some will say yes and some will say, you know, I, I just can't do it. I'll get your listing alerts to see what's going on. Remember that there's, there's a discrepancy between the new construction, which is much, much higher now than the resale. So if you can close and get a tenant in a move yourself, you're probably going to get a better value dollar-wise in the resale. But you're going to have to, but if you're just looking to invest in the future and wait three or four or five years, especially when you go in a huge building, giant giant building um, like uh, like the one young which is just monstrosity I don't know how many units that I look it up but there's probably a thousand units or two thousand units in this you know sky tower so many units you know if, if you're putting 95 stories at eight units a floor eight nine hundred units just in one building there's three here and the Toronto Star is getting some stories on top so there's so many units here you know so many units of course create supply and demand it may appease the, the demand, but can we really build so fast to appease all these people that come? You know, there's a million people coming into this country every year. A third of them come to Ontario, or half of them come to Ontario, I'm sure. So that, that's what you go. That's what you got, my friend. So this is Yossi Kaplan. I hope this video was good for you. If it was, please give it a thumb up. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Put a comment. If you have a question, please do. And you do put 1% at the bottom, I'll give you a cool link. Thank you very much. That's it.